Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. Alrighty, Monday, market down again, down from 2.5 to 2.3 trillion. This has been quite a drop, but how much farther can it go? <laughs> it's a real question. And look, we're going to get into that very shortly. I don't think the bottom is in just yet. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I'm just not so sure. And as always, nothing I say is financial advice. It literally is just my personal opinion. All right, so let's move on. So again, man, got up to 3 trillion, came down to 2.5 trillion, got up to 2.7 trillion. Now we're down to 2.3 trillion. That sounds like a market that is going down. We consistently set in lower highs uh, and that is concerning. Doesn't mean it's all over and it's all doomsday, but look, we need to consider that maybe we're in a bear market. I don't think we are. That's not my personal opinion, but I'm not completely closing it off and saying that there's no way because at the moment it definitely is possible. But again, we'll move on and get to that. All right, BTC dominance actually up a little bit, but we're still under 40%. So that's interesting. Not a lot of volume at the moment. Bitcoin price under 50,000. So back down at 49,000. It's been lower, it's been higher. And gas price, gas price is quite cheap. All right, as we can see, it's generally red to be expected when the market's down. But there's always going to be outliers. I mean, look, Ethereum's actually up basically half a percent. So what's done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Right, there we go. Basic attention token up just a little bit. Algorand. Look, we got a few moves there, but they are really, you know, quite small moves. A couple of high double digit moves, but then we're into the, you know, mid single, sorry, high single digit moves. And then we're into the mid to low single digit moves. And there really aren't too many before we get into the losses. So the losses is really what we got to have a look at then. What's not doing so well, considering the entire market's down, not much is going to be doing too well. Helium's been hit hard. Immutable X engine uh, been hit quite hard. Again, a lot of these metaverse plays that were doing well before are now starting to bear the brunt of it. But look, it's not just them. Everything is feeling it. You know, Adam had a big run. Quantum, Sand, look, even Luna. There we go. That's down 10% after the crazy moves that it's had. So plenty of double-digit losers there. Losses, not losers, losses. Uh, and plenty of then single digits and high single digits. Gala, there we go. I mean, I literally got into Gala at its all-time high. <laughs> I'm still, I don't regret getting into it. I regret the timing of getting into it, but I just needed to build a position in case it was going to continue to go higher. So for me, I will be buying more Gala, uh, and it's at a pretty good discount. And again, I never threw the kitchen sink at it. If it does go to zero, it literally, I won't say it won't affect me at all, because no one likes to lose money, period but it really won't affect me very much at all. And I'm not saying Gala is going to zero. I'm just using an example. I think I'm down nearly 50% uh, from when I got in. And look, that's it. I think it was 78 cents that I got in and now it's down to 48 cents. So nearly a 50% loss and 78 cents was almost spot on its all time high. So, you know, what do you do? I'm, you know, I was worried about putting money into these metaverse plays because I left the run real late. But if they had have kept going, I didn't want to miss out on them. Things like Solana just kept going. Things like Terra Luna just kept going. So I had to make a play and I only put a few dollars in and I'll continue to put more money in, particularly now that they are on a massive discount. But if Bitcoin continues to set in lower highs, then I really won't be putting too much money into them at all. I'm going to just mainly be investing in Bitcoin. I don't mind investing in Bitcoin on the way down because it's already at a good discount but I will be having mainly cash sitting on the sides for when I feel like there's a bottom or some kind of reversal. All right, let's move on. Bitcoin chart, here we go. So again, yeah, we had a little bit of a relief rally, but now it's already still looking shaky. And I did say I suspected we were going to get a bit of a uh, indecision candle, and that's what we got. And now it's early in the morning over there stateside time, so we're waiting to see you know what happens in the day. So three in the morning, let's see what happens at you know three o'clock in the afternoon and things like that. But again, we're holding, you know, we're doing all right. We're holding around that 50k level. So again, we got some uh, support and resistance around about here. We wicked into both of these. Now we've got to wait and see, are we going to continue to come down for a while? And again, we'll get into the S&P 500 chart that might give us a bit of an indication of what's going to happen. Because like it or not, 
it is correlated. And I've said this multiple times, every market is correlated. It's just at times they're highly correlated and at other times they're hardly correlated at all, but there is a correlation. If one market in particular and the bigger ones, not so much the smaller ones, i.e. the S&P 500, if that gets hit, everything gets hit you can guarantee markets across the board start to get hit other than maybe gold you know people used to buy into gold and maybe that might become bitcoin in the future but it hasn't really been that way at the moment the correlation is still high s p 500 going down crypto going down <laughs> all right ethereum though this is interesting has held so against btc now the price in the dollar's gone down but it hasn't gone down as much as Bitcoin. So it is holding, it's still in this kind of breakout territory again. And this is really where I was looking for that breakout trade to get, but it hasn't made it there. And look, I don't think it's gonna make it if things continue to get ugly. And we're gonna to have to wait and see. But at the moment, Ethereum's the better play. It's holding better, it's doing better uh, than Bitcoin, but not that anything is really doing that well. All right, a couple of stories I wanna have a look at. Crypto exchange BitMart has been hacked with losses estimated at 196 million. So 100 million of that is Ethereum and the other 96 million is Binance Smart Chain. And this Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain has been sent to uh, Tornado Cash and trying to be hidden and all the rest of it. So this hacker is really trying to make sure that they cover their tracks. But look, even that doesn't work. It really is a dangerous game trying to hack cryptocurrencies and i'm not saying that no one's been able to sort of i don't want to say do it successfully because there's nothing successful about basically stealing money from people but it's not like there hasn't been people that have gotten away with it but what we're seeing a lot is it may take a few months to even a couple of years but a lot of them are eventually getting caught now not all but a majority of them and we'll have to wait and see what happens 200 million is nothing to sneeze at and um, you know again it all seems really good when you got this free money and you're not caught it's when you get caught that usually you're going to be asking yourself oh shit i don't know if that was worth it at all particularly if you start to do 10 20 30 years uh in jail and you know even worse in some really horrible jail in some third world country or something like that then things really aren't looking so flash so yeah unfortunately that's life though there's always someone looking to take advantage of somebody else now not everybody is looking to take advantage of somebody else but there is somebody out there that absolutely will take advantage of other people there always will be will never be able to get rid of that or at least you know not in any lifetime that uh, i or you are likely to see so you just need to be careful not your keys not your crypto and even then if the you know your crypto is stored on your keys and all the rest of it you got to be careful that you got security on your um, on your computer and your phone and things like that and you're not clicking on random links and you know emails and things like that it really is a new a new world where you seriously need to be very careful about what you do because even with really good security people can still lose it all unfortunately again clicking on links and things that they shouldn't have all right ftx raising more money so they're going to look for another 1.5 billion dollars in the funding round and that will take their total valuation to 32 billion dollars now that's ftx kind of worldwide but that will also be uh raising ftx us to around about eight billion dollars so again the money's coming in even though we're seeing downward action uh price action at the moment you just got to look at these stories. FTX is looking to, you know, get more money. They're not going to do that when things are really going to go into a bear market. They just, yeah, there's not a whole lot of point. They can see where things are going out. Sam Bankman-Fried, very, very smart guy, but it's not just him. There's money literally all over the place coming into cryptocurrencies. And particularly when it's down, people want to buy at a discount. All right. Time Magazine. One of the oldest you know publication institutions that we have been around for probably a hundred years or so they're bullish on crypto and that's saying something when you can get you know again old timers sort of and it's not that everyone that works at time is an old timer but it's an old institution you know with generally old principles and ways and things like that and even they can see what's coming they're getting into crypto and nfts and all sorts of things so as it says one of the most transformative moments in our lives why time i.e time magazine is betting big on crypto and nfts now between launching their own nfts and holding crypto and educating uh, readers the century old media brand is looking forward this is the way of the future 
but it's just not going to be one massive upward movement. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs and, you know, heartaches. And it's like that in the traditional finance world as well. Don't think that, oh, it's different if you go to, again, traditional finance, that it's just always up. No, it's not. But the volatility is much lower. It goes up over time quite regularly, but it just doesn't go up by as much but it also doesn't go down by as much. And that's what people, particularly the older generation, they're just all about safety. They are really worried about the downside. But the newer, you know, the millennials and you know, even some of the Gen Xs and things like that, they're a little bit more accustomed to it. And they understand that, yep, the downsides are going to be brutal and they may last a year or two. But after that, particularly with cryptos and the good ones, when they do start to go up, you know, they more than make up for the losses and those painful times of when they've gone down. But there is a lot of scammy crypto out there, so please do be careful. Again, over 10,000 different cryptos. My personal opinion is you'd be lucky if there were 200 sort of good ones. I'm not saying legit ones. There could be a few more sort of legit ones, but good ones, 200, and then it'll be like the S&P 500. Out of the S&P 500, the top 500 stocks, there's, you know, kind of five, you know, real winners and then everything else is just kind of making up the numbers. Crypto is not that much different, except for, again, the gains can be so much bigger. You can make the craziest gains on the ones that are just kind of making up the numbers, whereas, you know, the big ones don't make the same kind of crazy gains as the smaller ones, but they are the safer play. All right, but it's not all good news. Bank of Indonesia aims to fight Bitcoin with its CBDC, sorry, excuse me. So Indonesia's central bank considers a CBD as a far superior financial tool to private cryptocurrencies. The central bank of Indonesia is willing to issue a digital form of its national currency as a way to fight private digital assets. The financial institution believes a CBDC would be more credible than Bitcoin or the altcoins. Now, some of that's true. A CBDC would be a whole lot better than some, most actually, of the altcoins. As I said, 10,000, there is not that many legit ones. But of the legit cryptocurrencies, their CBDC doesn't even stack up. It's not even close. CBDCs is just the same as what we have now, just a digital version. Still being manipulated, uh, i.e., you know, printed to infinity, and always will. That will never stop. You know, they talk about tapering and everyone gets worried that, oh, you know, all of a sudden Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will be worth nothing because they taper. Taper means slowing down. It doesn't mean stopping. They will continue to print. They always will. They can't stop. That's the system that they have. That is why, at least for me, I've come to cryptocurrencies because Bitcoin, they're not going to print more. There's 21 million and that's it. They'll be unlikely to ever you know, get a vote through that will increase Bitcoin, at least in my time, maybe in many, many decades, 100 years from now, they might be able to do something like that. Or, you know, something new comes along because it's generally every 100 or so years that the financial thing, uh, institutions kind of change. But I just don't see that happening really at all, let alone maybe in 100 years, because that means it, de it devalues everyone else's Bitcoin. So, you know, we've got 21 million, oh, we've lost 6 million, so we've only got, you know, 15 million, we need more. Okay, sweet, let's make another 21 million, but then the Bitcoin that the people have becomes worth half the price. Why would they do that? The only way they would do that is if it's okay, that means I've now got twice as much uh, Bitcoin and they don't you know, mine it anymore again. It just won't happen, but that is what CBDCs, CBDCs will be. There may be periods where they fully stop printing, but it just won't last. That will be what they do to you know, kind of pump up the price and convince everyone, no, these are legit, but eventually the money printer turns on, it just doesn't physically print money anymore. It will be continuing to just magically make more money, though it won't be based on anything. The dollar will continue to get devalued over time. There will just be periods within that time where it's not doing as bad, but it is still always going to be imprinted, um, you know, be increased. The banks can't stop doing it and the governments 100% cannot stop doing it. That's just something to keep in mind. But again, never financial advice. That's just me and why I'm in this space. 
All right, some more news. And again, it's not all just good news. I don't want to bring you all just the good news of hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, being invested into cryptocurrencies because there's downsides to it as well. So SEC Chairman Gary Gensler stresses crypto markets are open to manipulation and investors are vulnerable. And this is actually true. But the thing is, it's true in every single um, industry. It's not just crypto, but definitely there's you know more worries in crypto because it's so small. And you don't have to have that much money to really control some of these coins. Now, don't get me wrong, the everyday Joe, you're not gonna put $5 into some coin and be able to manipulate the market. But the big players, you know, coming up and all they have to buy is like one or two percent of some market and then they have really big swing. But that's the difference between crypto is it's so diverse. The big players are never going to be able to get in and simply buy up enough of the cryptos to have, you know, the kind of manipulative force that they've had in other markets. I'm not saying they won't have any, but Again, they'll just, you know, if Bitcoin becomes too manipulated, like, you know, the big players end up owning too much of it, people will just move away from Bitcoin. And then if, again, then all of a sudden it's Ethereum and then they move away from Ethereum. And so that is what's good about cryptocurrencies is something new can always come along and then those big players and then, you know, they're going to spread themselves so thin eventually that they'll just have less and less kind of power and that is one of the truly transformative processes of crypto is because it's not a dollar like we might go to a bitcoin uh backed you know kind of source but again if bitcoin just gets completely owned by nothing but the the rich and completely manipulated the good thing is it's a decentralized market they'll move on to something else that is not owned and again if that doesn't work then they'll be able to move to something else and that is really what i like about crypto is it'll be really hard for them to control the market like they have on the old markets because it was all just based off the dollar if you were in with the us dollar then and you know and the governments and things like that you could really take control and that's the system that we've been working under you know since back in the 1970s particularly when they got off the gold standard and that is what's really hurt us. So this cryptocurrency future, that's one of the things that I'm so big on. And again, it doesn't mean we just continually bounce to new cryptocurrencies, but that is what happens if something just gets too heavily uh, owned by the bigger end of town. The smaller end of town will just find something else to move to. But that is part of the regulation that's coming is the, the, you know, the higher powers are going to try to uh, stop that but they really won't be able to because that's what decentralization is all about all right now he has come out and said uh and i like this he has called for more investor protections in crypto markets this i like I, I, we do need some more protections but again not over regulated i've said this before over regulation doesn't work and trying to fit crypto regulation into the old re regulation doesn't work either we need completely new laws for a completely new system. He says this asset class is rife with fraud, scams, and abuse in certain applications. And again, that's somewhat true. You know, there's rug pulls and DeFi hacks and you know exchange hacks that we already looked at, all sorts of stuff going on. And we don't currently really have the system set up to uh, regularly go after these players. It's not that they don't go after the people that do that. They do, but it's all just so new that they're, again, still finding their feet so there are definitely concerns with cryptocurrencies and you've got to be very careful about number one simply getting into a space that's so new but number two into a space that you know there's so many different options out there and there are just a number of rug pulls and scams and things that are going on and you don't want to be one of those people all right last but not least the s p 500 <sighs> this is what i'm looking at this is really my key indicator and it is playing out similar to Bitcoin, have a look at this. Had a top, rolled over. Had a top, rolled over. Had a top, rolled over. Had a bit of a top, rolled over. Had a bit of a top, rolled over. And this is leading the way more so than anything else. And hence why crypto is getting hit right now because the stock market continues to set in lower highs. There's the peak or the ultimate high. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. We had a brief uh, rally, but it didn't break this high. And now we've set in another lower high again. This one's higher than this one, but this one couldn't break the one before it. So it's still lower highs. And I am concerned that we're going to roll over. And again, I mean, this, this is bad, you know, if we get down to here. But 
only bad if we get to here and it continues to go down again i'm not saying it's getting down to here it's already dropped quite substantially and it does seem like there's a lot of support here again look at that wick it got bought up and it's really you know doing a right holding sort of around here but we're below that already we're below this old all-time uh, resistance point so now this looks like it's becoming resistance again as opposed to becoming support which is what we want but this is support so 4,400 sort of 99 let's say 5,000 you know that seems to be support as long as this holds then I'm not too worried but if this starts to break and we go down I think the crypto market gets hit really hard and again this is when I start to think maybe Bitcoin is going to come down and test this $36,000 level. And we looked at the, oh, what was it, the CME futures gaps, and there was one down at kind of 34000 So that may be something that comes into play if the S&P 500 continues to fall. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment considering most things are down, but congratulations to you if you're up because you've outplayed the market and I'll see you next time.